For the scene where I'm standing outside of the city of Bethlehem, we had a semi-interesting dilemma. There was, what was it, A, B, C, D, E, five or six shots of me standing in front of the wall. Now we had done a little, I stood standing on an angle in some shots, so it looked like the camera was off to a certain side. And then we had varied around zoom lengths on the shots, so it looked like these were all different shots and I was, I was still standing in front of the same wall, but the camera had changed a little bit. And so we had this interesting problem of how do we make sure the backgrounds line up so it looks legit? So this is the solution we came up with, and it worked really well. Okay, so here we have um, the town of Bethlehem, a very beautiful little town. So this was actually modeled by Timothy. Major props to him for doing it. I kind of just sent him an extremely rough sketch saying, kind of want a, a city. This is actually going to be used in another scene, but because I'm standing outside of the city wall, excellent wall here, um, I told him, you know, if you can make this, and I thought, I'm just going to throw that in the background. So you kind of have a backdrop of that. So now, like I was saying just a second ago, we had this interesting dilemma of me kind of moving my position around and stuff standing outside of this wall. So what we did is we went and we kind of just watched all the films, or all the clips, rather, because they're not really films, and using a program called VLC, we just took a screenshot of one frame where I'm pretty much standing in position throughout the, the clip. So we have all these different clips of me, single frames out of the individual clips of my talking. Now for the scene, we already had created this extremely rough kind of outline of my upper body that was being used to cast a shadow on the stone wall behind it. You don't really notice it a lot, but it's subtle effects that add to the realism. So we went ahead and we imported all of those pictures. Now you can't, well you can kind of see here, each of those individual image frames we imported. Then we took, for example, let's just move this to layer one, we took all these different pictures and we said okay we need the camera to have the head match up and then line up with the outside here. So on this particular frame, what we actually did to make this easier to show is I put a keyframe in on the camera. Well, it's supposed to be every 10 frames for each of the 10 images. I missed a few here, as you'll notice. But like E is the last one. So this is E lined up here. Now, if we go back... Always move the camera to the layer. Um, let me grab one that's a real small picture if I can select one. Oh, here. Okay, like, whoops. Like this frame. My head still lines up, but the camera needs to be matched up to this orange border here of that image. So if we go back, I'm hoping I have the keyframe for that one. I think this is right. I mean, it's not perfect. Obviously, you can kind of see the orange. doesn't even go straight with the extents of the camera, but that's okay. It's close enough. So then we, since we had this, we just got rid of that picture of me there. Whoops. I accidentally just got rid of the wall. Didn't want to do that. The wall I need in scene one. So then we have more or less this lines up with my position. And then of course we would just render it out. Now I'm not going to render it now because that's going to probably kill the recording because it's that way too high of a quality to render it. But we would render the frame out and then once the frames were rendered we saved them. And so we have all of the six backdrops here. Uh, again in the center here you can kind of see a little bit of a shadow from that silhouette of me. Here you really don't notice it at all. Don't really notice it there. Notice it a little bit there. Whoops, and that's all of them. So then we will just be going through 
processing the video clips, doing the green screen, the masking on them, and plopping them right on top of these backgrounds. And it'll more or less look like a legitimate, like I was actually standing outside of this rock wall. Uh, of course, rocks wouldn't really intercept quite like that. And the palm tree probably wouldn't have kind of this blurry haze to it. And the clouds would be moving, which I don't know how that's going to look. Um, because the cloud doesn't move at all in here. What we might end up doing is, because we just put a big, a big plane in the back here with some curve to it for the clouds, what we may end up doing is either moving the cloud for the individual shots, might re-render them if the clouds moved a little bit. Honestly, I don't know how it's going to look, so I may just render it without the clouds, do an alpha background, and then in the compositing here, I may add an image of the cloud background and have that move just a hair, so it looks like the clouds are actually moving. I haven't quite made up my mind on that yet. I'm kind of going to run one through, see how it looks with the clouds not moving. If it looks awful, I'll re-render all of those individual pictures with the alpha background, and then put the sky in, which is actually why I started doing the the keyframing on the camera here. Because, like, if I go back and make some kind of a change, I don't want to have to be putzing around with lining the camera up to these images all over again. So I'm just going to put a keyframe every 10 frames for this camera, one keyframe for each image in numerical order, and then if we change anything, it's as easy as just re-rendering those sequences, which I could actually do by changing frame step to 10, and then I could just say start frame of 0, end frame of 50, render animation, it'll render the 5 PNGs, they take like 3 minutes each, so I could step away for a quarter of an hour, let those render out, come back, everything would be done, and then I would just have to run the bash scripts again, which renders all of the scenes, well pretty much does the compositing, because there's really no rendering going on, just the green screening on the video. So that is how we managed to achieve the semi-realistic background to <laughs> semi-realistic background locations on this shot. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this behind the scenes look. And as always, we post stuff. So you know, subscribe if you haven't, and then you will be like the first people to see the new stuff. Because we don't always post stuff on our Facebook and Google Plus pages the minute it's uploaded. And if you're subscribed on YouTube, you will, assuming you're on the YouTube page, and assuming you hit refresh or have some sort of auto-refresh thing set up, you will know right away when the video is uploaded. So, subscribe if you haven't. And if you want to get interested, or, yeah, if you want to get interested, yeah. If you're interested in volunteering, drop us a line and let us know.